Welcome. Uh, thank you. I'm Tara Neider, and I'm a senior VP at Ariva. And Ariva is a company that has the has has designed and supplied the systems that are existing at uh, San Onofre today. I'm a registered professional engineer, and I want to take issue with one thing that was said today, and that is that there's no potential alternatives in the in the near future. I disagree with that. We're currently working on a license. We have a meeting tomorrow, another meeting with the NRC on the um, the the interim storage facility at uh, in Andrews, Texas uh, with waste control specialists. That that facility will be designed and licensed for taking the fuel at this site. Um, I also want to say that I've been out of the I've been in the used fuel industry for almost 30 years, but I took the last four and a half years and was working in the, uh, the DOE market. And the DOE is taking is spending about six billion dollars right now on industry on on uh, radioactive cleanup at all of the DOE sites. Um, they part of that money that they're spending is emptying single shell casts tanks that are underground and moving them into double shelled tanks because of water intrusion and waste getting into the environment. We now know that the double shelled tanks are also leaking. So there is a way when you put things underground out of sight that that things happen. Nature is is a lot stronger than us and, I, and to have things underground right at the water level does not seem to make sense to me. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon commissioners. I'm a resident in Escondido, and um, most of my adult life I've been actively involved in trying to keep up with what's going on at San Onofre. Um, as you know, uh, you, I'm sure you've all been overwhelmed with all the technical reports and complexity uh, and reports by Edison's expert and the consultants they retained versus uh, report experts retained by uh, independent uh, consultants who are outside of the nuclear industry. Um, it makes it difficult for you, and I agree with previous speaker uh, that Edison has unfortunately, I think, placed this commission in a very uh, precarious position. Um, I don't think it's necessary. From my observation of uh, being in a stakeholder since uh, the community engagement panel was formed in the middle of 2014, um, Edison has pretty much pre-selected, pre-defined their choice uh, with uh, the type of cast that they've chosen to use the Holtec Umax stainless steel 5 8 inch thick containers. Um, it's pretty much, you know, their proposal, they've uh, invested a lot of money and a lot of time to have their experts uh, do analysis to the extent that it's possible. I wish to reinforce to the commission just to understand that uh, unfortunately NRC uh, is undertaking or is in the infancy process of undertaking rulemaking to determine or to develop rules that will ultimately apply to uh, decommissioning sites. Right now, the, there are no uh, rules in place. So we're going by guidance and policy and uh, nebulous things that sometimes change. Uh, it's very difficult. Thank you. Good afternoon, commissioners. Um, in 2014, November, uh, I learned of the plan to bury 1,632 tons of nuclear waste, and I got involved. Um, I've, met, I've spoken at bipartisan policy meetings, CEP meetings, and one of the most interesting meetings was in Washington, D.C., with the representatives from Nevada when they were told that everything was okay about Yucca Mountain. Well, the state of Nevada hired their own biologists and determined that their water was about to be contaminated, and they sued, and they protected their... I expect this, that the Coastal Commission to do the same thing, to err on the side of safety. I urge you not to let the gravity of a decision to use thin canisters to store dangerous nuclear waste unnecessarily fall on the commissioners. When there are leaks on the bluff, or the bluff fails for any reason, 
It will litter our precious ocean and beaches, and all of these containers could end up on the beach or in the ocean. And I'm not speaking of just radiological. That would be a hazard to even navigating those waters. There are too many unknowns in the applicant's proposal. When a decision requires as many conditions as the staff recommended, it is further proof that you need a better proposal. Approving the proposal today is premature and not best business practices. At a minimum, the rods need to be placed in casts that can be inspected and transported, or the Coastal Commission will be in the unique position of being the removal, the roadblock to removal when the DOE does come after them. And the DOE is considering removing the waste to the interim locations right now. I have a letter from the DOE, well, I will include for the record, uh, that states that. Congressman Darrell Issa that serves the district just introduced a bill co-sponsored by a Texas con congressman that represents the district that wants the fuel. Senator Feinstein and Boxer sponsored a bill calling for the removal. This is a bipartisan movement, finally. Page 9 of the staff report states off-sites are unavailable in the near term. I disagree. Texas has, has the desire to get the waste, the political will, and the approval of the people. They now have a low-level site, and it could be ready in five years, which is much shorter than what we're anticipating here. The same paragraph, there's no other site under SCE's control. SCE is not responsible for removing this waste, the Department of Energy is. And if SCE is allowed to place it in these thin canisters, they will obstruct the ability of the DOE to transport it out of there. We can't, reply, we can't rely on vendor reports. Has an environmental impact report been performed? I'm calling for an EIR report to be performed prior to your approval of this agenda item. We need facts, not promises from a vendor. Thank you for your time, and please vote no today. Thank you, commissioners. I have a little different report for you. And I was very touched, and I could see you were by the young man who testified. I'm very concerned, and I should be, and so should you be. There's a famous picture, what me worry? You bet. <laughs> we all should be worried, extremely worried. I don't want to see you come under fire or have liability, but I don't want to see the public disappointed in your actions. So we here are very concerned with the reports and expert testimony we've read and heard. And we urge you, this entire commission, to demand that Edison use only proven systems for storing nuclear waste that can be inspected. It needs to be maintained and have continuous monitoring. It has to be transportable and doesn't crack. Shockingly, Edison's proposal does none of these things. In order to protect our coastal assets well into the future, all of these criteria should be met before getting your approval. And we all know that Songs is located at shoreline in both earthquake and tsunami zones. It's vulnerable to any offshore or flyover targeting. The public is really not aware. They don't taste it, hear it, see it, or feel it. They are not warned nor aware of their proximity to hazardous waste, contaminated sand, or ocean waters where our children swim. Any more than in 1956, when my mother was filming in Utah, and everyone was exposed, and she had cancer. So Thank it's you. very personal to me. Thank I you care. for your comments. Thank you very much. Please do the right thing. Hi, my name is Ace Hoffman. Uh, I've been following this issue for decades. About four years ago, I went to an NRC hearing, and I gave out co about 180 copies of this book to this staff and to any activists and anyone else who wanted one. Uh, the staff of Southern California Edison. And a few months after that, one of them came to me and he said that he was very worried. He had 25 years experience at San Onofre. Before that, he worked at Los Alamos. And before that, he was a sniper in Vietnam. 
And he said that they're not welding the casks properly, that the uh, automated welding system that puts the, the tops on and, or the bottoms or the seams were not always being calibrated right. And when they weren't right, they weren't adjusting them. They weren't redoing them because of worker intimidation, which uh, Donna Gilmore mentioned. Now, when I was up at uh, Diablo Canyon a couple of weeks ago, the CPUC had a joint meeting with a, a, a state senator and a, a few other people, and they were adamant that they're no longer going to say that they don't, uh, that they're not going to be involved with safety. They've been saying that the same as you are saying it now, and they decided they're not going to do that anymore. Now, I admit that at some point they did say, well, we have to defer to the NRC, but you can at least consider it, and I don't think you're even beginning to. You've got to consider safety. That's what your job is, is to consider whether or not these flimsy dry casks. And also, I, I submitted a letter to Joseph Street this morning, which goes over dozens of problems with these dry casks. So you've, you've got to give, you've got to do your job, which is to protect our coast. And nobody else can protect our coast like you can, because you can simply say no, and I hope that you will. And I'm going to submit copies of this book so you can see what it was that the... Uh, the and they, nobody ever came to me and said that they found significant errors in this book. In fact, I haven't had anyone tell me there are errors in it. Thank you very much. I share all the concerns that you've been hearing this afternoon. And I want to just say that, that relying on promises of, of future technology is exactly what got us in the position we're in today. We were promised that the, nu that the spent nuclear fuel from our power plants would be taken to a, a permanent repository. And that was decades ago, and we still don't have one. I hope that we're not going to make the same mistake again by, by uh, allowing 20 years to develop a way to get these canisters out of the ground. The staff report mentions, but doesn't evaluate, some existing alternatives to the proposed canisters that may be more durable, inspectable, and ultimately transportable. I hope that you'll reject this proposal and encourage Edison to solve all the technical problems before the spent fuel was moved. Johanna Felder. What is not included in this report are the effects of the expected El Nino and its effects on the water table. If the bluff fails, there would be 157 ton canisters falling into the ocean. And this must be prevented. It is ludicrous that you cannot consider the possibility of a leak. So let's not consider what would happen to the 8,841,000 people in the 50-mile San Onofre evacuations, uh, evac evacuation zone, if there is a leak. But you can consider what effect bluff failure or contamination into the ocean will have on the marine life. Please deny this permit. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Roberta Kantsteiner, and I'm speaking on behalf of Laguna Canyon Conservancy. I'd like to ask a few questions. One is, has a stability analysis been done? What did it reveal? Are the bluffs, the bluffs are unconsolidated sand. Will the excavation go into the bedrock and how deep? <laughs> Two is, has an environmental impact report been made? Is it based on geology and engineering analysis? Three, will it contaminate the migrating groundwater located at the terrace bedrock contact? Four, cement is permeable. Will the vault be lined with lead or a similar dense element? How thick will that lining be? Five, what monitoring system will be used to measure radiation leaks? Six, if the vault is located near sea level, what will prevent it from contaminating the ocean? Um, I agree with most that's been said, and I'd like to add that this legacy is something that we don't want to regret. So I ask that you please vote no and get something more reliable. And thank you for your time and service. Thank you. Welcome. Good afternoon. Daryl Gale, Los Angeles. Everyone who lives near or visits the beach understands the concept of corrosion. Just look at common items like bicycles and patio furniture. It is easy to see the effects of sand, salt, water, and wind. Now, we all know that Edison is nothing like TEPCO, but they need some help, some encouragement, 
and I know that the Coastal Commission is much more enlightened than the Japanese government. TEPCO didn't plan for future cons contingencies, but we can. We've been very lucky here. We haven't had any recent earthquakes or tsunamis. We haven't had the problem that the East Coast has. Look at what's going on with, with uh, Southern uh, South Carolina, and look at what happened with Hurricane Sandy. But we've had another major problem, and it's collective denial. A 20-inch thick cask, cask manufactured by Camp is probably the best we can do right now till we have the political will and backing from the state of California, the NRC, and the DOE to develop a more workable solution in transportation and storage, whether it be regional or national. Coastal Commission, please take the lead and help us in Southern California find a better solution. Use your influence. Protect all of us here. We can't afford to take this potentially horrible risk of contaminating and decimating our beautiful tourist-friendly beach communities and the people, animals, and plants who live here. Let us all commit to working on a safer solution no matter what it costs. Prevention is a lot easier and cheaper than crisis mitigation. Please deny. Thank you. Good afternoon, Coastal Commission. I spoke at the CEP Community Engagement Panel meeting and was not informed of this meeting today by my trusted energy provider, Southern California Edison. How is that for transparency? At the CEP meeting, I had provided my email address directly to Holtec President Dr. Singh, who failed to provide the requested technical documents I had directly requested him to provide. I speak today not only for myself, but for my daughter, who is in college, and in behalf of my family members who cannot be here present today due to work obligations, I also speak in behalf of my unborn grandchildren, who have no voice today, since your decision will directly impact the millions of people who live near and along our environmentally sensitive California shoreline, which you have all pledged to protect for future generations. I am here to oppose the approval of application of agenda item 14A. The California coast is not a suitable site for the proposed temporary or permanent storage of nuclear waste. The approval of agenda item 14A appears to set a precedence that approvals for storage of high-level radioactive waste can be granted based upon speculative, unforeseeable, and unknown assumptions that the Federal Department of Energy will take custody of all the songs spent fuel by 2049. However, we all know the facts at present that no long-term storage facilities exist in the United States for the storage of spent nuclear fuel. This is a nationwide issue of grave consequence to the American citizens. It is imperative that the Coastal Commission not approve the permitting of the poorly proposed, designed, thin Holtec manufactured storage casts to be used for nuclear fuel storage, since the approval of thin casts would be premised upon a mere assumption that the nuclear waste can and will be re relocated. I urge a no vote. Thank you. Good afternoon, Commissioners. My name is Les McClosey. I'm a resident of Laguna Beach and a registered professional engineer in the state of California. Um, I'm familiar with this program by reading, of course, the literature. Uh, there are four requirements that are necessary to make this a successful, safe, dry storage. They are the, the canisters have to be inspectable, they have to be maintainable, they have to be repairable, and they have to be, most importantly, transportable. Um, I'm going to offer you three special conditions that we can add to the staff report to, to perhaps uh, find a way forward, because Holtec does not meet any of those conditions. The, the criteria for success in this matter is that those four conditions be met, among others. Those are the big ones. There are alternatives out there. Uh, so the, here are the four, here are, here are the three special conditions I'd like you to consider. Uh, the first one is to substitute for the Holtec containers, for the Holtec dry storage containers, uh, the European version, or there's also one being used right now at Surrey Power Station in Virginia. That has, that has been uh, approved and used. 
Uh, another, the, the second special condition would be to to apply uh, that that can, that to take that. Uh, Let's see, a couple of things I wanted to say. Uh, to take the new containers that they're using there and fast track them for, for approval, for certification and approval. And the third thing would be to move this dry storage site off of the uh, north area, north industry area, because that's in a floodplain. And in the future, uh, it'd be much better to locate that where Units two and three are. Thank you very much. Thank you. Barbara Miller, I'm, I live in Laguna Beach. Um, your decision today is a huge responsibility. If the canisters fail, the risk of harm to people and property within San Diego and Orange County is significant. This is a gamble we cannot afford to take. Will the canisters fail if there's an earthquake? Will the bluff maintain its integrity? Will the canisters fail if there is a tsunami? Will the location of the canisters erode? Will the canisters maintain their integrity? For how long? Do you know? Mr. Palmasano from Edison's, in his presentation, he talked about this being a safe, secure, and economical suggestion and plan. Are there thicker canisters which might be safer, but perhaps less economical? Do we know? The 10-year warranty is meaningless. What is the plan for monitoring? What will be done if the canisters fail? The bluff is too fragile to allow this plan to move forward. We need to keep beaches accessible without the dangers inherent in this unproven and risky scheme. I urge you to deny this application and to seek a safer option. Thank you. Good day, commissioners. I'm Bruce Campbell from LA. I'm not a Sierra Club spokesperson on this issue, but I am on a couple chapter committees and have worked on nuclear power issues since 1979. I was happy to see that the National Nuclear Free Campaign of the Sierra Club has submitted a letter just last night in, opposed, in opposition to SCE's Radway scheme. A fellow who gets 95% of his info from SCE claims to be endorsing the SCE application on behalf of a Sierra Club task force, yet no committee in the Angeles chapter approved any wording regarding San Onofre Rad Waste. Yet in email exchanges, Glenn Pascal was unhappy that someone accused him of endorsing the Holtec UMAX Radway system, which he said he never did. Apparently, he liked the general concept of storage, but has no position on the chosen canisters. By the way, dry cask storage must be in a cask, not a thin canister. Also, dry cask storage should have a good chance to stay dry but it will not stay dry due to the poor design of the Holtec UMAX system with its vents and drain. Plus, Holtec canisters cannot be repackaged into a cask and thus cannot be transported. This site will not be decommissioned by 2051 because of the high burn-up fuel has to cool down longer in order to be transported. Holtec canisters cannot be transported and cracked canisters cannot be transported. If the plan won't work, then reject the SCE, SCE application. Please use common sense as to whether it sounds like a viable proposal. Rejecting an unviable proposal is not judging this subject on the radiation <laughs> issue. Now consider the thickness of casts again. The German cast 20 inches thick contain 24 spent fuel assemblies. So, uh, and then the 5 eighths of a inch thick, what would they contain? One, maybe one assembly? No, they want 37 assemblies. This is a cheap, cheapskate utility trying to pull the wool all of, over our eyes to get a permanent rad waste dump while acting like they're going to move the waste out soon. Here's a letter from the Topanga Peace Alliance I want to submit to the record. In, and they also oppose the application.